Welcome to another episode of Historic Eateries. We're on episode four, and today we find ourselves in Columbus, Ohio, at Schmidt's Sausage House and German Restaurant. This was a surprise. I was expecting to be at a historic restaurant today, but I had some business to attend to in Columbus. Business is over. I was looking for a place to eat for lunch. Google searched, and alas, behold, a historic eatery came up into my search. So here we are. We're gonna go check it out. J. Fred Schmidt settled here in Columbus, Ohio in the early 1880s. Opening the J. Fred Schmidt Meatpacking House in 1886 in the heart of German Village, Schmidt's became a Central Ohio's most well-known name in meats and is to this day sold in leading grocery stores around the country. J. Fred's grandson, George F. Schmidt, opened the company's first restaurant in July of 1967, just around the corner from his grandfather's meatpacking plant in German Village. Using meat recipes from the packing days and dessert recipes from the German ladies hired to Run the kitchen, Schmidt's Sausage House became an instant success. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're saying this restaurant was established in 1967 and that justifies putting it into the historical eatery series on our YouTube channel? Would you care to explain? Nestled just south of downtown Columbus lies historic German Village. Originally referred to as the Old South End, German Village found its roots in the early 1800s when an influx of German immigrants settled in the area. Oh, it's ties to the historic German Village. That makes sense. You can continue. With German being spoken in churches, schools, and stores, the heritage and culture that the German immigrants brought to the area turned the working class neighborhood into a smaller version of Germany. If you take a stroll through German Village today, you'll be surrounded by the original orange masonry, brick streets, and preserved architecture dating back to the 1840s. The appearance of this intimately personal neighborhood has changed very little in the last century. The closeness of the village is felt in every aspect from its sense of community to the proximity of the homes. The German Village is home to beautiful parks, gorgeous gardens, as well as great retail stores, restaurants, and bakeries. And right across the street from the Sausage House and Restaurant, they have Schmidt's Fudge House. Get to the fudge house. All right, I got my seat. It's a little bit crowded here today, but uh, it is a weekend. It's a Saturday. Lunchtime. I was set about a 20 minute wait, but I got seated within three minutes. They have a couple of different rooms for seating here, but here is a shot of the man. This is the special bar features, soup of the day. Looks like smoked sausage and bean. Might be right up my alley. And the cream puff of the month, blueberry. I might have to try that. And then the regular menu. Everything looks really good. I'm torn. I'll probably be getting the old world of sausage sampler because why not? With a cup of soup and a dessert. 
All right, to start off my meal, of course I have to get the German potato soup and it has cheddar and bacon on there. So we're gonna give that a try. Oh, and look at this, on every table on the condiment rack, there is mustard and horseradish. That is neat. All right, German potato soup. I don't see any really big chunks of potato. But we're gonna see. That's good. That's really good. The potatoes are in there. They're more of a uh, big, they're like shredded, but not like a home fries type of shredded. I don't know, it's weird. Not like a cubed potato, but it definitely has very good flavor. And the smokiness of the bacon it definitely tops it off and makes it great. So if you don't get bacon with it, uh, it's probably not quite as good, but uh, it's not overpowering. You can definitely taste the potato in here and the, uh, the heavy cream bacon cheddar. It's good. All right, entree is up. This is the German Old World Sausage Sampler. It comes on a bed of kraut, German potato salad, chunky applesauce, and a split top roll. Looks and smells delicious. All right, that's gonna wrap up our lunch at Schmidt's Sausage House and Restaurant. It was really crowded in there and really noisy. They have German music playing, plus it was super busy. Uh, it is a weekend, it's summertime, so I'm pretty sure they're hopping every weekend, but um, I didn't get to record as much as I wanted to, but what I did, we'll see how we can edit that together. Overall, the meal was really good. The sausages all had different, unique flavors. There was four pieces differently seasoned. Uh, one of them tasted just like a regular hot dog, but the other three had unique flavors. One of them, the texture was a little different than the other two. Uh, but overall, I would say they were all equally as good with the hot dog one at the bottom of the list just because it tasted like a regular hot dog uh, and it wasn't anything different or unique. But uh, the German potato salad, holy cow, it's warm, first of all, so I'm assuming that's German tradition to not have cold potato salad. But this was warm and it tasted excellent, really good. And the pork and sauerkraut, again, excellent. Everything was really good. And then I did get a blueberry cream puff. I don't think I recorded any of that because like I said, it was loud and crowded, but uh, that was also very good. And I also got some desserts to go. German chocolate cake and a regular cream puff. We'll do a review of those when we get back home. So I tried the German chocolate cake and I must say, it's probably the worst item from Schmidt's that I had anyway. The cream puff on the other hand was really good. So between the two dessert options, definitely stick with the cream puff. But overall it was a great meal. If you're in the Columbus, Ohio area, I strongly recommend going to Schmidt's for lunch, dinner. I don't think they serve breakfast, but you can buy sausages by the pound. So you can take whatever they make there. You can take it home with you. So that is gonna wrap up another Historic Eateries. Episode four in the books. Until next time, last time. The roads of this entire town are all cobblestone. And you have to move over to let each other pass because they're only wide enough for one vehicle, but they're not one-way streets. So if you have oncoming traffic, you have to pull over in whatever space you have to let each other go. And then it instantly transforms from cobblestone, quaint little village, to paved city roads. It is really weird coming out of that little German village, the quaintness of it. And then you just instantly end into a uh, real world. Like, it's like a M. Night Shyamalan movie. Go, get to the fudge house.